think I'll grab something cold to drink out of the refrigerator. Let's see here. What looks good? Oh, this looks good. You know, but as good as this looks, it doesn't look great. I mean, all those ads that we've seen for years, you know, the icy, cold, refreshing-looking soft drink that you just want to grab out of the magazine. How come ours doesn't look like that? Your mind's eye pictures a Coca-Cola bottle. Uh, cold and dripping with, with moisture and uh, glowing. Uh, because you've seen it that way for years in ads. If, I were to sh if you were to take a Coca-Cola bottle and slap it down on the set and shoot it uh, without doing anything to it, it would look opaque, plastic, dull, dead. Uh, it wouldn't have its dimension. It wouldn't look three-dimensional. It would be uh, very thin and uninteresting. Coca-Cola makes it taste delicious, but professional product photographer Richard Levy makes it look delicious. We asked Richard to tell us how he does it. Okay. The object of a photographer's job is to make the product look as appealing as he can. The crisp, fresh, cold, wet feeling has to be uh, brought out artificially. I can't depend on my studio being the right humidity and uh, keeping several dozen bottles on ice and pulling it out and waiting for the condensation to form by itself. Uh, I have to be able to control that. The first step that I take is I mask the bottle. Uh, the liquid inside the bottle retains the temperature much longer than the air inside the bottle and therefore when you take the bottle out of the refrigerator, realistically, the condensation happens in front of the liquid, not where there's not liquid behind it. If I don't prepare the surface first with a, a, a matte dulling spray, which also, by the way, adds a slightly frosted look to the glass, as if the bottle had just come out of the refrigerator, then I may not have so much control over the droplets of condensation on it. Okay, David, why don't you get the coat? Yep. And we're going to set the velvet up. Okay. That yeah, it just has to be wide enough to cover a tight shot. That's good. Take that. Okay. Ready? Yep. There we go. Hold that up real nice and high. Try to get as few bubbles as possible. Should just about get it. Uh, more. That's good. Good level on the bottle. There you go. Good. Okay. Now let's see if we can get this atomizer. Give me some sweat condensation here. Then I take an atomizer with a mixture of anywhere from pure glycerin to pure water, depending upon how that surface is reacting. We have enough stuff. Okay, Dave. You want to hand me the caro syrup. And uh, yeah, I can add a couple little larger drops in strategic places if I need to. Then I put the bottle on the set and begin to uh, compare what I'm actually seeing to what I was hoping I would see. And that's where photographers' judgment and uh, critical abilities begin to play a part. This is where I start to exercise control over the picture. I can let as many of the accidents that are happening happen if I like them. But if they're not happening, I have the power to change them. Um, I can put a reflector behind the bottle. In this case, it was necessary because we were working on it against a dark background. If this were a light background against this bottle, maybe enough light would be coming through the bottle to bring out details. The adjustment of that reflector is crucial. The amount of highlights and dark areas in the glass are actually represented in each bubble and drop on the bottle. And I get a more contrasty or softer feeling in each bubble, depending upon how many different highlights and shadows are actually going on inside the bottle. This mirror is picking up, in this case, a very strong side light. And the strong side light is, is important with a three-dimensional object in this uh, situation, because it allows me to see the molding of the bottle. The fact that the bottle is round, if I were to light from both sides, 
uh, would flatten the bottle out. My next step is to place a card opposite the main light and fill in the shadow side of the object. And how close that card is and the angle that that card is determines how much fill I get. I don't want to fill out the bottle to the point where it looks flat. I want to retain the sense of, of shadow to highlight uh, ratio so that the bottle appears to be three-dimensional. Because remember, at every step, we're taking a three-dimensional object and reducing it to two dimensions. I have to constantly, artificially reinforce the viewer's sensation of looking at a plastic, solid, three-dimensional thing. I have an advantage of working with uh, equipment which is, I would imagine, unaffordable to the average amateur photographer. In some cases, my lights are six feet square. Uh, now, if the photographer at home is willing to work next to his window with a six foot square sheet spread over it um, and work at a very particular time of day, he might be able to get that huge soft light. Uh, I try to reduce my pictures to as few um, uh, problems as possible. And uh, doing that in my amateur photography has taught me a lot about reducing unwanted things. And if you fool around in your, in your living room with a camera and as, as a, a large and soft a light source as you might want to try to work, you might be able to simulate a kind of open sky feeling. And you might be able to move objects in them and see how they react to a light. Every reflection, every glow, every drop, every bubble, they're arranged and orchestrated by Richard Levy. So next time you see an ad, you'll know why the photo looks even better than the real thing.